I mean, this may be very short term, this bringing American troops home from Afghanistan. We'll see. You know, I mean, uh, Iraq's one example of what happens, you know, the attack on the second largest city, Mosul, one that we know, and it's, that is, you know, thousands and thousands of years old. Um, or is the example, and we chose to come back in because of the nature of that. Or could it be like Vietnam, where we just, you know, we basically uh, shake our hands and said, uh, at the end of Vietnam, we said, okay, we're done. And, uh, you know, and two years later, it was absolutely, uh, you know, it was invaded by uh, North Vietnamese uh, conventional divisions. I don't know which parallel to follow. I don't know which example is going to happen. I do know, though, it's going to be important for America. Jeff, last word to you on Afghanistan and your, and your book. I mean, I've, let, I've tried to lead you through it a little bit, and uh, it's, it's a good read. And, and I think you begin to understand uh, as a reader that conflict and how tricky it was. And I, I was moved by a lot of the moments in there, such as ramp ceremonies, where your book is peppered with, with these, these moments where American soldiers uh, are loaded, who have been killed in battle, are, are honored at a ramp ceremony in an aircraft before flowing home with the American flag and with soldiers who served along with them. By the way, we were not allowed to cover those ramp ceremonies under the Bush administration because they didn't want us to show American losses. And in the end, I think we showed a Canadian ramp ceremony because we, we had to talk about losses. But, um, you know, there was always this PR effort that was, that was going on. Uh, you know, are we winning? Are we losing? And oversimplistic views on, on how the Afghan war was, was being fought and what was victory. And I think in the end, you know, it was going to be a 20 year counterinsurgency fight. And a lot of people knew that certainly in the military, I don't know if the politicians ever did, but last word to you, sorry. <laughs> you know, it's funny about the ramp ceremony is, is that those were some of the most memorable times of my life and yet the most challenging to get through. I mean, uh, we lost 180 soldiers and Marines, sailors and airmen while we were there, uh, including also uh, some civilians from our intelligence agencies. And uh, almost each and every day or night, we would have a ramp ceremony uh, for those uh, to honor them. And people would come out from all over. Most of them were at Bagram Airfield. They would come out and uh, whether it was two o'clock in the morning, they'd line the streets as a Humvee with a coffin would go by to take it to the ceremony itself. And, um, you know, war is not a bloodless effort. War, if it's important enough for people to put their tre national treasure in it, you're going to have some losses. But you have to honor the people that served there. Just like right now, as we, um, as we get ready to leave Afghanistan, let's not, uh, you know, leave all those people that actually gave their, uh, their time, their selfless service. In some cases, they gave the last full measure of their life. Let's not forget them. And there was not another attack on America while U.S. forces were on the ground there. There's not. There's not been. Jeff Schlosser, retired Major General, commanded the 101st Airborne. Read the book Marathon War. And Jeff, thank you so much for your time. And Dana, thanks for the time this morning.